Thank you, Professor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aida. Thank you, Lunara, for the invitation. And thank you for the audience uh, who are here. As you can read in my slide, uh, I will talk I will talk about the PhD studies in the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences and the myth and reality. My name is Luis Rojas Solorzano, and I'm the director of the graduate programs in the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences. Uh, first thing, uh, let's uh, remember what is a myth. A myth is something that passes from one person to another person that not necessarily is true. And uh, I want to talk about what are the popular myths that people have about uh, doing the PhD in STEM disciplines. And uh, these myths are typically related to prior aptitudes, uh, regime or duration of a program, financial support, expectations. And essentially, people uh, have some beliefs about the skills and mindset they have to uh, have before taking the PhD, uh, how long it takes, and uh, how much dedication they have to put into the program. Also, uh, many people have about uh, doubts about the financial uh, support if they will be starting during the PhD, and uh, what are expectations uh, during the program. Uh, I think someone has a microphone open. Uh, can you please close the microphone? Okay, thank you. And uh, first, let's see uh, some myths about prior aptitudes. Uh, after the myth, by the way, I will present the program itself in the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences, and I will come in the end to present what is the reality against the myth. Okay, regarding the prior aptitude, some people believe that if they don't have experience, work experience, they are not going to be good uh, candidates for the PhD. And some people believe that they need uh, to know everything uh, in their field uh, before they take a PhD program. And other people believe you have to be a genius, uh, otherwise they will not uh, succeed in the PhD. And even some people believe they are too old and too much experience. I don't think I will be a good uh, fit for the PhD. Uh, regarding the regime, uh, let me tell you that most of the myths are regarding that uh, PhD is just another program in which I will just take classes, I will just go to classes and uh, follow my regular uh, student life for three, maybe four more years. Also, some people be business hours. I have a boss that gives me some assignments and I will have to deliver those assignments in business hours. But other people believe that the PhD is more like a slavery. They have to be sleeping all day, 24 by seven, inside the lab or working in a classroom in the, doing calculations. And uh, let's see what happens with that. Regarding the myth uh, on financial support, let me tell you, uh, many people believe that the PhD will be a period of their lives in which they will starve. They will not have money to support the family and they will have to pay from their pockets for going to field trips and picking data and they have to pay by themselves uh, the money to go to conferences or trips for training. And the consumables also, they have to take some money from their savings to pay for that. And regarding the expectations, let me tell you what are the most common myths that people have about the PhD. Uh, some people believe that the PhD is a place or a program in which you will be assigned a supervisor and a this is topic and you have no word about it. And some people believe also that once they embrace a PhD and they propose a topic of research and they have a hypothesis, if their hypothesis proves to be false, it will be considered a failure at the end of a program. And some people believe also that they want to publish after the masters and they have to wait until the end of a PhD to start publishing. And other people believe that the PhD is only for teaching, only to become a professor. However, other people believe that a PhD will put them in a level overqualified such that it will be difficult to find any professional job after the PhD. Okay, before I tell you what is the reality that is behind this myth, I want to introduce you how is the PhD in our school? The School of Engineering and Digital Sciences 
has an organization. Now I will give you an idea of how it is organized from the academic point of view. You can notice in this slide, we have a dean, and then we have two vice deans, the vice dean of academic affairs and the vice dean of research. And underneath, we have the head of the department, we have six departments, and we have the director of the undergrad program and the director of the graduate program, which is my case. And all of us, we interact through the school board with, of course, support from the administrative staff, and we uh, oversee the whole running of the school. And with uh, we create some committees that check the teaching and learning, graduate committee, and so forth. And those committees uh, interact with the different departments that have a graduate committee that is attached to those committees. The uh, current doctoral programs that we offer in the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences can be listed in this slide. You can read first the Science, Engineering, and Technology, which is the oldest PhD in our school. It's run between two schools, indeed, the School of Science and uh, humanities and the School of Engineering and Digital Science, which is the managing uh, school. And also we have this discipline specific PhD programs. You can see chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical, mechanical, robotics, and computer science. On the right hand side, you can see the departments at which each of these programs is attached to. And how is a typical PhD per discipline structure? Each one of these PhD per discipline is made of 240 ECTS, which are European credit units that represent a workload we expect to have dedicated by the end of the program. And essentially, each one of the PhD participants has a first year in which the student has to take about four core courses and six elective courses. And in this process of the first year, the student has to pass what is called a comprehensive or subject qualifying exam at the end of the first year. And after that, in the first semester of the second year, the student has to pass the research qualifying examination. And passing both qualification exams is mandatory to continue as candidates in the program for the rest of the program, which is expected to be three board years. Besides these conditions, the student has to keep a cumulative GPA of B minus or above in the courses taken, and the student must identify the supervisory committee of his or her thesis by the end of the first year. And the thesis proposal, as I said, will be defended in the first semester of the second year as a research qualifying examination. And the program ends with the defense of the thesis at the end of the fourth year, in, in some cases, if here might be allowed. What do we offer at the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences to our grad students? Well, we offer, first thing is excellence. We have a faculty integrated by local faculty, national faculties, and international faculty, all prepared abroad and the best universities around the world. And we are around six different departments and 70% of the faculty is international faculty. We have a very supportive, efficient administrative and technical staff supporting our work. And we have notch state-of-the-art laboratories and high performance computing supporting our research and teaching. And of course, we have a library that is also state-of-the-art in library uh, that is available for all the students. Besides that, we are receiving every year more and more international students which are, who are looking for a good quality education. And at this moment, we have about 50, uh, more than 50 international universities that are working together with us in the supervision of our PhD students. Regarding dissemination of research, we offer to uh, have the opportunity for our students to participate in high impact publication journals also in the generation of patents and entrepreneurship opportunities. And uh, not the least uh, in the last position, but it's also very important for us to be uh, uh, good contributors to society. And we participate in events and we offer services whenever they are available. What do we expect from our grad students is another question. And we expect 
from them, we ask from any other NU uh, students, what we call the NU graduate attributes. These are summarized as first, we expect them to have uh, in-depth, sophisticated understanding of their discipline. Second, we expect them to be curious, creative, open-minded, hardworking, of course. We expect our students to be thoughtful, decision makers capable to involve other people and uh, persuade other people about good ideas to be uh, accomplished. We expect our grad students also in some cases to be entrepreneurial uh, people, uh, self-propelling, capable to open new companies, new industries. Also, we expect our grad students to be good communicators and not only in English, but in different languages and as much as they have in different cultures. And we want them to be cultural and tolerant citizens of the world. Finally, something that is not finally in such a place, we expect our students to be uh, integral people demonstrated every single day. It's very important for us, that condition. And finally, we expect our students to become leaders in their different uh, development of the countries. Now, let me say what are the, is the reality against the myth that I presented in the beginning of my uh, speech. We said about the prior aptitudes, work experience was not really uh, the truth because prior experience is important in some cases, but in many cases we have master students who are completely very well prepared directly to start the PhD right away. Some people think about the knowledge they have to have before coming to the PhD. They have to be quite uh, deep uh, knowledge uh, uh, connected. That's not true. Uh, deep knowledge will be gained throughout the PhD, and that's part of the learning process that will be accomplished. And about the genius uh, condition, of course, being a genius is a, is a plus, no matter, uh, no question about it. But more than being a genius, we value the curiosity, the critical thinking, hardworking, discipline, passion of our students. And uh, what about the I am too old and over experienced? Well, the passion, energy, discipline is not related to the age. We know that. We have young and old people, that they have passion, energy, and they work very hard to reach their goal. Uh, what about the regime? Uh, people think about three, four years to complete the PhD is enough. Well, that's not real. Uh, these three and four years are for scientific growth. They have to demonstrate that they are learning and creating new knowledge. It's not just coming to the classroom and taking classes. And the rigid business hours are working like a slave in laboratory. That's not real. Uh, what matters is not the number of hours that you work, it's what you accomplish, it's what you do. So the PhD is more about accomplishment, achievement, rather than dedication or activities done. Uh, what about the financial support? The myth about you will be starving with your stipend, or I will have to fund myself to pay for my trips. That's not true. The program in Nassar Bajev University, the PhD at the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences, offers BTAs, which is graduate teaching assistant positions and RA positions that allows you to teach. And indeed, teaching is encouraged for at least two semesters. It's a mandatory during the program. And that will give you an extra income to give you a competitive income throughout the program. And about the funding for conference trips, or for consumables, not real because the PhD students in the School of Engineering and Digital Science at Nassau University, each student has a budget and with that budget allocated per year, uh, we cover uh, expenses for conferences, consumables and training trips up to a certain limit per student. What about expectations? Well, uh, the people that believe that they don't have any decision uh, on the supervisor of the topic. That's not true. The supervisor on the topic of research is, a, is an agreement. It's a decision that is taken between the supervisor and the student. It's a mutual agreement uh, between two parties. And what about if the hypothesis of your research proves to be false? 
uh, will I be considered a failure? Not at all. Because as you know, when you do research, a rigorous research, uh, sometimes might lead to a hypothesis that proved to be false. And in many cases, per se, it's a finding, it's an important finding that discovers new features that people didn't know before. So any rigorous investigation is good, per se. Finally, about the expectations, people believe they will not publish until they end their program. That's not true. In our program, our PSD the students they must publish at least one Q1 or Q2 journal paper as lead authors in the research topic of their thesis before the day of defense of their thesis. So our students are solid researchers that can be uh, competitive with any other PhD candidate around the world. About the position they will get after doing the PhD, it is only for teaching. That's not true. That you will become overqualified for professional job. That's not true. Indeed, let me tell you that as recent survey in MIT in 2017 demonstrated that 50% of the PhD uh, uh, graduates from MIT, they work in the academia and the other 50% work in the industry and research and development sector. Well, with this, I close my presentation and I open a, a space for questions and answers. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, the participants, if you have any questions, yeah, you can use your microphone or our chat box. Um, yes, all the questions are welcome. Also, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, in the middle of November, we'll have a virtual open house day of our school. So you are more than welcome if you uh, have um, any interest in our school. So please join us. Uh, all the information will be in our websites, also in our Instagram page, Facebook. Uh, also, the yes. record of this uh, record of this webinar for today's webinar will be in our YouTube channel. Uh, so please follow us there. Yes, any questions? Uh, hi, Luis. Norbeck. Yeah, my name is Norbeck and uh, I'd like to uh, ask, uh, could you tell more about the first year? How many models will be during the first year? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, let me see if I can share my screen again. Uh, okay. I, I will show you the, the program, how it is. Uh, okay. Uh, connected. Uh, you can see my screen. Uh, you can see that uh, the first year we have this structure. Uh, okay. I think I have yes, mostly. Uh, you have uh, courses and elective courses. Core courses are by definition courses that you have to take no matter what. And elective are courses that you can pick from a list of electives you are offered. Okay, so in the how many semester, co courses? Yes. Two. We have four courses, four. Okay. But four, let me tell you, four this, four, yeah, the core courses are research method and ethics, which is a, a, a kind of, a, I would say a light, light course about the methods to do investigation, research okay. uh, in general. And the thesis research, it is a core course, but uh, in the first year, we don't push too much on that until the second okay. year start. Uh, what will probably take most of your time in the first year are the six elective courses, which are regular courses for graduate mm -hmm. students at the PhD level. Okay. Uh, where I can see the like a list of core courses apart from these pages? Okay, uh, you can go to the web page of the School of Engineering and Digital Science you will find uh, per each one of the PhD programs we run in a school, a, a specific program with a list of electives that we offer. Okay, say, uh, say what, for, uh, I'm uh, going to apply for uh, construction management and uh, what kind of core courses will be for construction management? Well, there is only civil engineering. I mean, uh, this is a general PhD. 
and the, the, construct, the construction management. Uh, for example, if you plan to work on the civil engineering PSD, will be uh, mostly developed throughout the thesis. So the core courses are essentially probably final element analysis, transfer, uh, uh, design of structures uh, at the higher level. And there are some electives that might appear like uh, I have, we have to check in every single department, the electives. And uh, I would tell you the major uh, uh, flavor of your PhD that makes you a civil a PhD in civil engineering in construction management will be related to the thesis. The thesis will have that ingredient that will make you a specialist in that particular field. Mm -hmm. So, different to the could masters. Tell, yes, go ahead. Could you, tell, could you tell a little bit about assessment system of models? Okay, assessment for the, the uh, core courses and the elective courses is as in the masters. You have to take classes, you have to take exams, you have to take uh, homeworks, and you might have presentations. It's a regular course, at a slightly higher level than the master level. Uh, but it's very similar in terms of content. Maybe you have more homeworks and maybe a higher level assessment. And then uh, the, after the first year, the PSD becomes research based. So you have only research. And then every year you will be evaluated based on your progress on your investigation. You will be assessed how much uh, you have progress in your research. And typically, to assess the research, we check publications. If you have any publication in conference or in a journal, uh, this is a good way to track your progress throughout the program. Uh, let me tell you something else. In the first year, once you finish your course load, your, your courses, you have to take the subject comprehensive qualifying exam, which is based on three subjects that you have to pick out of six or seven. And these three subjects, do will be examined in the end of the first year uh, to check the background and the depth of your knowledge. And after that, you have a research proposal examination after the first year, in, this, in the first semester of the second year. These are the major assessment you will have, the course assessment and the subject qualifying exam and the research qualifying exam. You have to pass all of them. Otherwise, uh, you cannot continue, okay? These are mandatory conditions. Mm -hmm. Any other question? I have, yeah, I have a question. Uh, maybe Mary? Thank you. Who, who is that? Dinara or Mary? I can, Dinara. Uh, I... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mary, Dinara. <laughs> Dinara okay. Dinara. Go ahead, Dinara, please, first. Dinara Utecheva, you can ask. I think uh, maybe she's not connected. Mary, Adinar, okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I heard some of the myths which I have in my head, things like PhD is only for academics. Uh, I have two questions. Um, if I, I mean, I, I work full time, how much of my time I should dedicate to studies uh, if considering that I will be successful in applying for PhD? Uh, do, do I need to dedicate some uh, constantly, say, a certain number of hours per week, or it may be a few weeks during semester? Uh, and second question, uh, is my previous, if my previous education is in project management, not, it's not, uh, it's, it was master's in project management, uh, is, is it okay to apply for SETS PhD? Okay, it's a very good question. Uh, okay, first thing, it's about uh, dedication. It's a full-time program. It doesn't mean that you will be like uh, working uh, like a slave, working 24 by seven, no. You will work, I would say in average, equivalent to eight hours per day, uh, if you want to complete the program with a good uh, you know, record. As some, some weeks you might need to work more, some weeks you might need to work less, in the first year, the dedication is very special uh, because you have courses to be taken and you have to keep a GPA of B minus. So if you don't have full-time uh, availability, at least uh, I, I don't recommend to apply because that will take time and that's not possible 
with a job. It's, it's difficult. It's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult. Second question you asked me about the master's in project, project management. You have to um, first see in which uh, of the programs you fit. Okay, uh, we have civil engineering and we have uh, mechanical engineering, we have chemical engineering, and, and you have to see in which area you want to develop your, your, uh, your thesis. Your thesis is the key part to decide in which program you want, you want to be. Uh, if you want to continue in project management, uh, as per se, uh, I would suggest probably to think what component of project management I want to to master, I want to become, uh, a, a create new knowledge. Because PhD, in the thesis of the PhD, this is about creating knowledge. Are you planning to create a new uh, method to run project management in, in building, uh, construction of buildings, such that this uh, new method can save money and lives or, or any other thing? And you are thinking about the mathematical model you have to introduce in the discipline of civil engineering. So, so there is no PhD in project management. But there is a PhD in civil engineering. And civil engineering has one of the two fields is construction. So I, I would say if you can turn your interest into the design of a new methodology that has mathematical background uh, to be supported, you might build a thesis with that. Remember that uh, the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences, uh, the language we use is mathematics. So mathematics has to be involved somehow. If you can justify your analysis with mathematical background or a mathematical analysis or something that can be taken to that extent, uh, you can turn your interest into a thesis that can fit well in the Department of Civil Engineering, for example. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much. My pleasure, okay. Mary, I think Mary has a question. Yes, hello, Professor. Uh, hello. Thank you for your uh, useful presentation. Uh, I am a uh, research assistant in FED and I studied industrial engineering. Uh, actually, I have a master in uh, industrial engineering. I want, I want to apply for a PhD in FED uh, this year. Uh, as I uh, work uh, now uh, in uh, mechanical engineering department uh, with one of the professors, uh, my question is that uh, if it is a, a good idea to, uh, to apply for mechanical engineering, uh, or um, do I have any chance uh, to, uh, to be accepted in this uh, major? Or uh, if you have any other idea, other better idea, uh, okay. I am really... Okay, yeah. good. Very good question, Mary. Very good question. Let me give you a trick, guys. This is a trick. Check the departments in which the PhD program uh, is located, okay? For example, mechanical engineering. Uh, check the department and check the faculty that is in that department. In every department uh, webpage, you have the faculty research interest. And uh, if you find that the research interest of any of the faculty that is in that department fits your interest, you have a good chance to apply for that PhD. Because PhD, uh, as I said, there is a formal uh, part of a PhD, which is the course that you have to take, uh, the courses you have to take at the first two semesters, subject qualifying, uh, research qualifying, some. But the most, most important part is the research element. And that research element be based on a subject that can fit in that PhD. And the PhD has to have a supervisor that belongs to the department. So if you can find yourself identified with a faculty from that department that works in the same area that you want to develop your skills as a researcher, as an investigator, you have a good chance to apply for that PhD. If you don't find a faculty that works in the area that you want to develop, that you feel you want to to, to be the PhD, and I don't think it's a good idea to apply for that PhD because you will not have a lead supervisor or you will have to take a different subject or topic of research that is not your main interest. Did it answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you very much. My pleasure, Mary. Any other question?
Yeah, feel free. Don't, don't don't worry about asking. Okay, please. No no question is uh, simple not to be asked. Any other questions, guys? Uh, can I ask about the time of the uh, about the deadline? Deadline for application? Yes. Uh, maybe uh, Aida, my colleague, my answer. Aida, do you have the deadlines for application yes. this year? Yeah, it's uh, the all the deadlines uh, for graduate programs are on the uh, on the approval of uh, university management now. Uh, maybe next uh, week uh, or at the end of this week will be published in our website. Uh, so please follow it there. The updated, the fixed uh, information will be in the website. And you dot Is it just for the uh, uh, language test, IELTS, and TOEFL? Uh, I mean, uh, is it necessary to have uh, this uh, license and to apply for the PhD this year? You, you uh, have? Uh, yeah, Aida, go ahead, please. You are telling about admission requirements, right? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the previous year, uh, because of some uh, pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. they, uh, the university uh, accepted uh, to illegal uh, ah, I see. Mm -hmm. I understood. Uh, I mean, for this year, is it uh, any change or not? Uh, about this uh, English proficiency test, uh, this dual language test and the Alex test was uh, for uh, just for that time when it was like quarantine and pandemic time. But now the IELTS centers are open, so now we are. Uh, we are accepting only IELTS and TOEFL, but if the situation uh, will be changed, so we will update this information. If, uh, I mean, the, the situation we will get, for example, in worse uh, sites, so we will, of course, uh, we will um, search other options like Duolingo or other. So, but for now, um, we changed nothing. So IELTS and TOEFL were uh, accepting. Okay, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. hey guys, welcome. Yeah, I want to share with you some other uh, hints. Uh, in the last, uh, we have graduated 20 PhD students uh, in the last two years in our school. And uh, I, I read the interviews that they got from our uh, marketing department. Most of them have a coincidence. Uh, I would say 50% of them said that the success of the program uh, was uh, also connected to the supervisor, uh, the good supervisor they found. So I want to emphasize that whenever you want to see if you fit well in the program that you want to apply for, try to see if there is a faculty that you feel that might be my supervisor, that might be the person that I want to have as a supervisor because that person, she or he, or he works in the area I want to work and that person uh, has a good record, has a good personality, whatever, and then that is the very important uh, aspect to consider, okay? Uh, you need to make a team with your supervisor, and this is something that you will not be imposed. You have the decision uh, to say yes or no, I want to work with this topic or this uh, faculty, but the faculty also has a word to say. He or she might say, I want to work or not with this student, and this is the topic of the research. So it's a negotiation that you have to, to embrace, and that's why first thing, check the departments of the program and see what the faculty are doing, and see if any of these uh, topics that they are working on is of your interest. That's, I would say very, very important thing to consider. Okay, any other question? Yeah, if you have any questions, please. <clears throat> okay, so here Lunara provided us uh, all the necessary uh, links. So for PhD, uh, for our faculty page, admission page, please, yeah, look at it. Um, so if you if you do not have any questions, other, uh, we would like to thank our participants and our dear professor for this very uh, wonderful presentation. I think we all enjoyed this presentation. Uh, yeah, see you in our next webinars and also welcome in our virtual open house day in November. 
uh, the record of this webinar will be in our YouTube channel. So you can check there if you need. Uh, so thank you. Take care. And uh, you, everyone. good luck I for hope all to see them. you soon in our school. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye.